We were talking about de-baptism, and maybe we've gotten off it a bit, but uh, I'm trying to keep it back together. I just want to say a couple of things. I realize what I have to say probably means nothing because I'm Jewish and I'm burning, probably as we speak. <laughs> But, uh, Jesus was a Jew. That's no just, sin. You know, well, why don't we why don't we just stop for a minute? I'll let you ask your question. Just stand there with me. You said there is no other way but the way that you espouse. What do you say to people who are Jewish who make up a large very, part of the population? Very good question. Jesus Christ was a Jew. All of Jesus' original disciples were Jews. Jesus came to the Jew first. If you're a Jew, that's all the more reason to put your faith in the Jewish Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. What do you say to that? What if he doesn't want... I thought that the Messiah has not come yet. That's what we believe in Judaism. He has come, and he's coming again. If you'll read your prophets, such as Isaiah and Ezekiel, you'll find out that there are two comings of the Messiah. First, he was to come and be rejected by his people, and he's coming again to establish his kingdom here on earth. And we're going to be talking about the third coming of Jimmy Swaggart before long. <laughs> Obviously, that was not a very satisfying uh, uh, dialogue. Really what, what were you going to ask? Not Basically, I, just, I didn't really want to ask anything. I just wanted to say, similar to kind of piggyback what the lady up there said, that I just think that you're, you were talking how everybody else is insecure and that you're very secure, but yet every time somebody says something, you're the first one to jump in and call them a sinner or to call them, you know, to tell them they're going to burn. And if you were secure... You know, you could just sit back and say, well, that's on them, you know, it's their problem, you know, let them deal with it as it comes or whatever. It just seems like you're trying to, just to make such an impression, and it seems like you're very insecure. There is a question in there. The question in there would be, if you are very solid in your religion, why does it matter that he's Jewish or that somebody else is a Buddhist or a Mohammedan? Why not just say they're wrong and let them do what they're going to do? Why is the need to... Because we, we have a concern for people. We have a love for people that they'll hear the truth, follow the Lord Jesus Christ, serve him, Sally, and not it's corrupt the world with their lies, sin, it's, and unbelief. It's the compulsion we were talking about. This is what we mean by addictive religious behavior. And these two people are the best examples I can think of. It's not addiction, it's love. You had your hand up. Um, did they have a personal experience with the fundamentalist religion? Like, did God come down to them and say that was the best religion? I was uh, formerly a college professor. I got involved in the drug radical revolutionary movement of the hip of the 60s. Ended up dropping it's out, laying on the beaches minutes of North Africa. And someone came and preached the word to me. Well, uh, I was sensible time. enough to listen, then read the Bible, and I believed. You had too many. Made a rational decision. You, you had too many drugs. You were you fried and fried, didn't you? Read the Bible. Sally, actually, I thank You're God fry. for people like her. Because otherwise, I would not be getting swamped with invitations to lecture and speak across the country. It's true. They're they making thank you. Like you. <laughs> what I would like to do, what I would like to do, though, <laughs> is for everybody to have respect for our audience, That's right. especially the two of you, because we really respect them and we would like them to say something. Okay? Chad, I was a witness one time to one of your uh, college campus talks. Which uh, campus? University of Connecticut, about four years ago. Uh, by the end of the day, when I walked out, it was near the School of Education, most of the people were, and I felt bad for you, most of the people were laughing at you and things like that. Your approach, your approach to those kids, Jed, was so off-centered and so off-base that I think you ended up driving more kids away. You may have picked up a few kids that day, I don't know. But you drove so many kids away that day with your approach that maybe you want to rethink the way you're going about what you're teaching, because maybe what you're teaching is the way, I don't know. But your approach is so, so caustic, and you interrupt so much that I think you're going to turn a lot of people off. Who cares what Jimmy Swagger did? Yeah, yeah, most people have already rejected the truth. The apostles were regularly mocked, ridiculed, spat upon. I, I think, Jed, that's what he's talking about. Jed, I hear. think that's what he's talking about. <laughs> okay, I just, I just want to say um, that I don't agree with this deep baptism because um, I feel that... Um, how could you take away something that has already been done? I mean, if you don't want to go to church as well, you grow along, that's okay. And I also want to ask Cindy a question. Can you take off your hat to see if your hair is on fire? Because you're going to burn. Uh, 
uh, if you're interested in Fundamentalist Anonymous, there is a way out. Richard wrote that, if you'll hold that for me. Ooh. And Jed has written a book called Who Will Rise Up? A Fiery you Preacher Compels You to Radical Christianity. You know, this has nothing whatsoever to do with your religion or your beliefs, which I greatly respect. But because of the way you've treated my audience, I will never, ever have you again on any call on the some members of our audience will receive, and a promotional fee has been provided by... Who missed everything you were soft enough to snuggle? Couldn't fool you. Only snuggle gets your whole wash as soft as me. Slender You, the no-pain workout salon everyone tries to copy, where customers lose inches while salon owners build their own businesses.